Uh, thank you all for joining me today uh, for another exciting exciting lightning talk. Uh, I've been working with Ilya for the past year, and he is just an amazing and passionate asset engineer. And today he's going to be talking to us about a really interesting topic, which is accessibility. So with that said, Ilya, the floor is yours. All right. Thank you, Nader. Uh, so today the topic, we will talk about Swift UI accessibility beyond the basic. Uh, so um, just the overview of that accessibility in mobile app means making them uh, usable by people with disabilities, ensure uh, inclusivity and compliance with law and, and uh, ethnical responsibility. So let's, before jumping to the Swift UI accessibility, let's just compare with the UI kit accessibility. So Swift UI, as you know, is modern UI framework has built, uh, built in accessibility features that are designed to make it easier for developers to create accessibility user interface. It uses a declarative approach where you describe what the uh, UI should look like and, and behave. And Swift UI takes care much of the accessibility work automatically. Versus UI kit, uh, since it's, uh, first of all, it's an older UI framework, and while it's also support accessibility, developers often have to manually implement and manage accessibility features. Uh, it flows uh, it flows an imperative approach where developers need explicitly set accessibility uh, prior, uh, properties and ensure properties accessibility uh, through the UI, proper uh, through the UI. So, with that was said, we will go through the accessibility uh, Swift UI accessibilities, and the chapter is going to be uh, accessibility essentials, common issues, or mastery of accessibility beyond the basic, and then we'll do like the demo uh, code demo. So accessibility essentials. Uh, let's talk first about like the common uh, usually used accessibility modifiers, which is like accessibility value, where you can uh, we can provide the um, value as the string. So it would add the textual description to the value of the view contains. Also, uh, I also marked the bold uh, accessibility label because it's used like the many times. We will discuss a bit more about it shortly. So added the label to the view that describe its contents and accessibility hint uh, communicate to the user what happened after performing the views uh, action. Modifier that should be used more frequently but they're not so uh, accessibility or so priority. We can put like the which priority should be the first and the next for the uh, voiceover. We also will see all of them in demo shortly. Uh, accessibility hidden, so we can say that some of the elements should not be um, reached for voiceover. Also, uh, accessibility element children with contain option and combine. So different between them, contain uh, will. Uh, so it's a access any uh, child accessibility element became a children of the new accessibility elements. So we contain, let's say, a bunch of the elements just together, like in one bucket. Or uh, combined versus that, children accessibility elements uh, properties are merged into the new accessibility elements. So you still have the multiple elements in one bucket, but they're not accessible. It's accessible. You can just. Uh, Voiceover can reach only the bucket, so you can you, you can really see what happened inside the bucket. You can just tap in the bucket. That's it. Cool. Uh, so common common issues or uh, master accessibility. Two of most uh, common issues accessibility at traits. We can pass there. Let's say is a button. Uh, as the given trait to the view. So what the issue is here? Uh, if you use accessibility at trait as a button, it indicates that you might be making a mistake. Why? Because it's like a silly modifier, why is the mistake? So typically, adding traits in this manner is not recommended, as there are more elegant approach for handling accessibility for custom components, and we will take a look at them a bit later. Um, um, so accessibility label, what? And the second one, accessibility label, uh, where we put, let's say, delete delete label. So labels should be only applied to actual labels. But we have a superior approach. Instead of overriding accessibility, we will replace it. And at a really lower level, uh, I'll demonstrate it shortly. So technically, for both of them, accessibility at trace, accessibility labels, that needed when you're working with the custom component. And for some reasons, default implementation is not what you're looking for. 
let's say you have button you put the for this button uh we, we will uh take a look at it shortly but let me just explain you have a button you put the label for this button let's say delete so in that case we sort of will say all right delete button that's cool but then you say it's going to be uh like system name for icon going to be trash and the trash label will override delete so now you get the delete the trash button which is not what you're looking for so you like think all right I can put the accessibility label but it, it has really like better approach for that and I will show uh show it a bit later in the demo so but in the general you can use accessibility representation to replace the accessibility attributes with those from the configurations label so otherwise if not using this the accessibility of this button will only be uh, derived from the image that's like the difference between like uh, images and the label for the button potentially casing the label provided when constructing the button to be lost signs it may not be visual render it for this style um, again when we go through the code it will be like more um, understandable for you guys cool and then we'll talk about like beyond the basic so technically what should we do with the custom elements like canvas canvas provide for us a really great opportunity to build something like uh, some graphic draw but uh by default canvas isn't uh, accessible it uh, remains uh invisible to voiceover to address this we can utilize accessibility children to uh, establish accessibility elements within the canvas this allows the voiceover uh, users to navigate inside the canvas and access information for each week let's say if I grab with the weeks it's important to know that these accessibility elements are not uh, visible on the screen, but but serve the representation of the canvas for users relying on uh, assistive technologies. So we're talking about that accessibility children allows us draw the voiceover object. So we will put the stocks, we will uh, stock a vertical stock, we will put the labels, we will put some functionality but it will be visible only for voiceover if not it will be visible on the UI and we will see in that uh, also shortly and the rotors really nice one uh, which is 100 percent beyond the uh beyond the basic so create an accessible rotor with specific user visible label and entries I put these screenshots here just that you can see how uh how it's like activated so you put the two fingers on the screen you rotate them and then you see sort of that the menu where like switcher like rotor actually where you can uh rotate and take like specific let's say demo accessibility rotor um label which will do some specific things with uh our our stock uh of the, like the elements i will also show like shortly so rotors in accessibility are powerful mechanism where accessibility elements seamlessly scroll into position as soon as the user selected a specific rotor entry in voiceover this code offers you a uh, direct access to the uh, comprehensive list of the available rotor entries uh, making it convenient to pass and manage with your application so uh what it says it says that some of the uh, elements as you can see on the screenshots has a, a flag which uh which will be active when we're using the rotors so user with disabilities should not uh, go through like the all like 20 like 100 elements if he will use the rotor it will navigate him only for important one like work email uh, home email uh, kids school and with that was said let's go to the demo quick time player with like real device so uh what do we have here uh we will discuss we will just we just discussed about accessibility basic and we will take a look uh activity card view which is this tree then we will talk about the gross graph view uh which this percentage of gross uh which use the uh which we, which I use the canvas to build then we talk about the custom button which is here and then we go to the uh stack rotor in the beta so cool let's jump into the code um so eventually what we have like default behavior right now all accessibility they like turn off uh all of them so what we have here we have a, a 
couple stacks with the text, images, status, and also uh, we have horizontal stack with two buttons. So if I will turn on voiceover, turn on voiceover. Voiceover is now on. Accessibility demo heading. So to navigate through the all elements, you need to swipe right or left to go like back and forth. So that's the uh, default behavior right now. What we have. Accessibility and Johnson. Person image at an agent one. So it's going to name. It's going to icon. Then on the email. Status update. Let's go to status update. Like button. Comment left. Button. Okay, cool. May Chen. Then it's jumping to another one. Uh, let me see. That happens just because the container was activated. So let me rebuild that. Swift UI accessibility demo. Recently updated. Cool. Double now. tap to open. Accessibility demo. Heading. Thank you. So now everything disabled. Let's tr try to do like one more time. Ann Johnson. May Chen. David Bow, person, image, at an agency, person, at me, person, at user one. So right now you can see that the, by default, voiceover can recognize all the objects, but we have an issue. It's jumping between the different cards. Let's say Anne has like status update, main chain has status update, and David Bow has status update. And I don't want to like navigate through like all the names or the emails. I just want to keep that the voiceover keep me in the one sort of container, right? In that case, that's what we're using. We're using the uh, accessibility element children containers to make that one object like contain. So in that case, voiceover will not be jump between different containers. So let me uh, reveal that. Swift UI accessibility demo. Accessibility demo. Percentage. Accessibility and Johnson person at an stat like comment may chan. Awesome. Now we can separate all the objects uh, in the one, one container. What next? How we can improve the user experience? Let's think. Technically, um, technically, I don't need to have, let's say, the email right i can put it here and also as you can uh here already the text like capture sort of that text go like first so the priority already set to first and the also might be a good idea to combine that element swift ui accessibility demo so after adding that uh modifiers Let's accessibility demo heading and johnson status update awesome so we say uh icon so icon will be hidden also email will be hidden uh, i hear the name because it's like priority and then i hear uh that it's containing like together so now like but comment left may chen status update like come david bow Status update. Awesome. That's how we get the, uh, that's what we get the power of the uh, accessibility priority, hidden feature combined, and also uh, contain in a one component. And also after that, we can just use it like that, really easy. That's cool. Let's go through the um, other things, uh, which is right now is Canvas. And as we talked before, Canvas is not reachable. So let's try to reach Canvas and see what happens. Like button. Percentages of grows. Nice. We have percentages of grows, but we have it just because. Uh, uh, let me see. I don't remember. Maybe we just have it for free, which is also cool. So. Uh, Trash next button is going to be the trash button, which we will also like rename. But percentage trash right now, percentages of grows right now it's not accessible. So, what we can do here technically, uh, we can put the label first, uh, for that element that it tells like 
this is the lines of code bar graph. And then accessibility children will uh, extend that uh, element sort of like the container. So we will draw rectangle to focus each of the like columns. And then uh, accessibility label and value will be like some magic for us in this case. So what information we want to provide for user? Technically, uh, this is the first information, which is uh, uh, indexes. And the, so it's, uh, it's a week. And the second one is going to be here. Oh, no. Hold on. So that's the week, and that's the percentages. So we will provide it in a way uh, we want, can decide, but technically it's going to be like the first week, and then it's going to be percentages. So after I am edit it. Swift UI accessibility demo. Let's build it. So we add first accessibility. accessibility demo heading. We first add the accessibility label. Lines of code bar graph. Nice. So next let's... percentages of grows. Cool. Let's try to navigate back and forth, see what we can get. Lines of code bar graph. Week one thirty percent. Week two week 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 two twelve percent. Awesome. So in that case, by using accessibility children, we can draw specific voiceover object, which uh, again, it's specifically voiceover. It will not be visible on the UI, but it's uh, it works for voiceover. And disabled people can reach and get the all information from the graph by uh, which was drawn by the um, canvas. One thing is we also can do here since it's like custom component and voiceover is uh, can really like uh, by default work with the canvas. Let's say that the um, percentages of growth is also heading, uh, which is also nice to let them know. Swift UI accessibility demo. Users yep. that what the text or what the uh, what the like heading accessibility demo heading. So accessibility demo is a heading, and it's nice to uh, for users to know that the percentages of growth is also heading. Percentages of growth heading. Awesome, that works. Cool. Next, uh, we finish that. We finish like the second one. Then we have a button. So uh, let me just jump in. Custom button, nothing special, just button with some label uh, with some. Uh, button style, we pass there the image, uh, we do like some frame for that. But in the general, we have a uh, label and we have an image. So what what uh, what it's supposed to do for us? Technically, it should say delete button, right? Trash button. Huh. It's not. Uh, image is overriding in that case. Uh, it says the trash. So what we can do? Technically, we can do something like that accessibility label, uh, and that will work. But we have like better approach. So inside symbol button style, it's also like custom one. So here we can do uh, inside this. So uh, inside button will inherit from button style uh, protocol. And here uh, inside the make body, we have configuration. So the, that configuration is, uh, it will let us know the label. So we can put the label right here and the label is gonna be uh, like the delete or whatever we will say. So accessibility representation will not overwrite, will replace completely and put the uh, every time like configuration doesn't matter. So in that case, uh, we don't need to put every time, uh, every time, our coded string, let's say it's it's delete or whatever. We just say doesn't matter what it's gonna be. If it's a label, just put it in a label. Uh, question why it's not the label? Because in this uh, in this case, it will not allow us to use label uh, because it's not conformed to string protocol. So the uh, representation is the right way here. So let's check what happened after. Oh, yeah, let's do that first. Swift UI accessibility demo. 
All right. Uh, Accessibility demo heading. So when I tap on button, delete button. Awesome. We have delete button. So what we can do more uh, technically, uh, not what we can do more, but how they let's say accessibility while it works or accessibility hint. So while you will add like some uh, more information to the button if you need it. And the accessibility hint, as it was said, it works after uh, action. So it's going to be the last in the order, which also can give you like some ideas. Swift UI accessibility demo. Of that button, uh, what it's doing. What it, accessibility what it's doing. demo, heading. Also, that's not the best practice how to use it. It's, I just want to like highlight what it can do. So technically right now, that's what we have. Delete. Needs for remove items. Button. During tap, it will change color. Uh, that's the order how it works. Cool. Next one going to be the router. Router, uh, not the router, router. Um, works a bit differently. So let me show you. I have a model uh, with some data. We will push through the, uh, to the stack to for each, I guess. Um, that's the for each, that the all values. Uh, also, it was elements, uh, element view, so you can see like small, um, small like. But like Stack the, rotor one. Uh, small like. Use the rotor to access demo accessibility rotor. Cool. So um, let me. Oh, and the most important things here. So that's how you apply the rotor. You put the demo accessibility rotor or any other uh, label to that specific rotor that when you're switching, uh, turning, you can find it. And then you can say like, uh, what exactly should be under the rotor. We have a is rotor entry label. Uh, you can see that it will be on the work email, on the kids school and at home environment. So what it's, it, it will does, uh, let me try to activate it. Carrick demo, access, Carrick demo accessibility rotor. Cool. So now if I will swipe back and forth, Accessibility one, two, working four, kids six. That works as expected. But if I will swipe up and down, it will jumping only on the uh on the elements which will which has the flag. Home email. Kids school. Work email. That's it. That's like the really important things. All other can be like skipped or so, but that's like the really important thing. We want to have the flag on them. Um, so yeah, that's end of the, end of the demo, uh, code demo, let me see. Yep. Uh, so let me jump back to the conference, uh, to the presentation. Um, so, uh, what I want to add, uh, as the conclusion in the, uh, in this presentation, we have explored a, a word of accessibility in a mobile app development. With uh with like focus on the Swift UI. Technically, uh, we have seen how um accessibility features ensure uh exclusively in compliance with law, uh promoting ethnic responsibility and app design. We have the, uh discussed best practices such as creating custom uh accessibility elements, adding custom elements like canvas, uh using accessibility modifiers uh efficiently. Additionally, we learn how to encapsulate code for reusable and uh, for like reusability and maintainability. So accessibility is not just a uh, legal requirement, but a commitment to making technology accessible to everyone. Uh, by incorporating these principles and techniques into your app uh, development process, you can create applications that are not only functional, but also inclusive, inclusive and user-friendly for all. And what I have, any questions? Yeah, that's awesome, Ilya. Um, yeah, I remember in the previous application we had, we were focusing on, on colors a lot. And uh, someone from Apple said, well, what if someone was colorblind? And we're like, oh, well, you're right. So we need to kind of like, we think the way we are doing, we are designing things. And a lot of people do miss missed that at the beginning where they didn't don't think of accessibility as the building so uh it's really important for everybody to focus on accessibility um as they are building the application 
just like it's important to test, it's important to write accessibility with it as well. But yeah, great job, Ilya. Sure, thank you. I just want to add that uh, building the accessibility from like the dev perspective is sort of one more practice. You learn how to develop, you learn how to test, and now you have to think also about how you will design your components from the accessibility perspective, which is, uh, I believe, really important. That, that, that's the future where we're living right now. Thank you all for joining us. Elia, thank you uh, for an amazing demo. And just a reminder to join us every Thursday at 5.15 Eastern time. Next week, uh, we will have uh, Sam Musa, one of our cloud pra uh, pra practice engineers, talk about how to decide uh, an application architecture. And if you've enjoyed this, I just want to remind you that we do have an iOS uh, summer workshop that's coming in in a couple of weeks. You can find us at summit.inwithem.com slash iOS, and you can register there. Uh, we will be talking about just kind of giving an introduction and then talking about scalable architecture. And then after that, we'll be talking about uh, the iOS 16 navigation. Um, and then we will talk about modernization and a little bit more about accessibility. We will also provide uh, coding uh, examples. And then, you know, we'll have someone just can try to implement what you learn because it's really important for you to not just uh, listen and understand, but also implementing them while you're learning them. I think that's crucial. So that's why we have, you know, the, the learning and then you would have a coding exercise following it. Uh, with that said, thank you all for joining us and have a great evening.